We are just a few weeks away from the start of the 2024 United Football League season, and I cannot be more excited. With the USFL and XFL coming together to form one strong spring league, I thought it would be fun to go through each team and preview their head coach, roster, and schedule. In this video, I will be previewing the St. Louis Battlehawks, where Kakao is the law. St. Louis may have one of the strongest fan bases in all of the UFL, and I cannot wait to see them pack the dome once again this year. They are a team that is projected to win the XFL Conference according to Vegas, and should be fun to watch this season. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football and spring league football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, let me know who your favorite UFL team is in the comment section below. The St. Louis Battlehawks have consistently been a strong team on and off the field in the XFL in both the 2020 season and last year as well. In 2020, led by quarterback Jordan Tayamu and safety Kenny Robinson, the Battlehawks were one of the best teams in the East Division with a 3-2 record before things were shut down due to COVID. In 2023, led by first-time head coach Anthony Beck and former Alabama legend and career NFL backup A.J. McCarron, St. Louis finished the year 7-3, just missing out on the Northern Division playoffs, finishing third behind D.C. and Seattle. Throughout the 2023 season, the Battlehawks averaged 35,000 fans per game as the city embraced them like they had done in the past. Heading into this year, as of March 4th, according to Las Vegas, the Battlehawks have the second best odds to win the inaugural UFL title behind Birmingham and ahead of D.C. Heading into 2023, there were a lot of question marks around head coach Anthony Beck heading into the season. To the casual football fan, he was sort of an unknown, but had plenty of experience playing for over 11 seasons in the NFL and coaching at multiple levels of football. During his playing career, he became the third NFL player to ever play in 152 consecutive football games, finishing his career playing in 167 games, recording 188 receptions for 1,537 yards and 21 touchdowns, with the New York Jets, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, St. Louis Rams, Arizona Cardinals, and Kansas City Chiefs, retiring after the 2011 season. He had spent six years at IMG Academy, coached in the NFLPA Collegiate Bowl, and was a member of the San Diego Fleet's coaching staff of the AAF. Right before the XFL came calling, he was serving as the Wiregrass Ranch High School's offense coordinator, but due to his experience, he was a perfect choice for the XFL, with his experience developing young football players. St. Louis players loved their unknown head coach in 2023, with players describing him as a player's coach, and the team did not disappoint whatsoever as the team embraced his coaching style and philosophies. But last year, he was an unknown. With the pressure of high expectations and everyone knowing him leading into the season, will that translate to success? At offensive coordinator, the Battlehawks will be guided by Bruce Gradkowski. Gradkowski played for over a decade in the NFL, even throwing to Beck when he played with the Buccaneers together in 2006, and after his playing career ended in 2016, he got involved in coaching at the high school level, serving as a volunteer assistant quarterback coach at Anthony Wayne High School. As a head coach at St. Francis de Sales High School, and as an offensive analyst for his alma mater, Toledo, in 2022, before joining Beck's St. Louis staff last year. At defensive coordinator, Donnie Abram, who played nine seasons in the NFL with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and with the New York Jets retiring in 2004. He soon got involved with Florida High School football, with Terrapin Spring East Lake High School, St. Petersburg Gibb High School, where he served as their head coach, and with the Tampa Bay Storms of the AFL, Clearwater High School, where he was a head coach, and IMG Academy as a defensive coordinator, Illinois as a defensive back coach, and with the Orlando Apollos of the AAF, where he served as a defensive back coach before joining Beck's staff last year. He's experienced coaching at multiple levels and should have talent on his defense this season. When it comes to the quarterback position, the Battlehawks may have one of the best rooms in all of the league, headlined by A.J. McCarron while also having Brandon Silvers, who started for the Seattle Sea Dragons in 2020 and started for the Houston Roughnecks last year, throwing for 2,551 yards and 13 touchdowns, as well as Manny Wilkins, who was a third stringer for the Battlehawks last season. McCarron has been a career NFL backup who has been a reliable guy for NFL teams throughout his career. He played in 19 NFL games, starting for 1,192 yards and 6 touchdowns. He impressed last year playing for St. Louis, throwing for 2,151 yards and 24 touchdowns, which was a single-season XFL record. In the regular season finale, he finished with 420 passing yards and 6 touchdowns, 
which was the most in a single game in XFL history. McCarron chose to play in the XFL because he wanted his kids to be able to watch him play in person, although he was in high demand as a backup in the NFL, which paid more, and he had a ball playing. There were questions around whether he would return to the UFL because of the new union contract, but with him choosing to come back to St. Louis, it's almost guaranteed for him to be the starter heading into the season. At running back, they returned Mateo Durant, but are replacing Brian Hill with former New York Giants and NFL veteran Wayne Gallman, as well as Jacob Saylor, who played college ball at East Tennessee State. At wide receiver, they should be stacked with talent returning three of their four wide receivers that spent time in the NFL, Marcel's Aitman, Darius Shepard, and Akeem Butler, while also adding all XFL wide receiver Corey Pearson and Blake Jackson. Jamarcus Bradley should be a name to watch as well. Although he was picked in the rookie draft, former Florida State tight end Kimor Gamble was recently cut, leaving Jake Sutherland and Kamari Averett on the roster as of now. St. Louis returns all of their offensive line from last season, while also adding three guys who started with other XFL teams last season. This line should be able to keep A.J. McCarron upright for most of the season. When it comes to the defensive side of the ball, the Battlehawks will need to find a replacement for LaCale London, who is now a rotational player for the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday. Look for Freedom, Akin Maladun, Kevin Atkins, Austin Falu, Antoine Jackson, and Kobe Smith to be key guys to keep an eye on. Last year, the Battlehawks struggled when it came to pressure off the edge. This was a problem they addressed by adding Peter Tawamopenu, who was the Defensive Player of the Year, award winner as a member of the Las Vegas Vipers last year, and spent time with the New York Jets after. Pita finished with 7.5 sacks last season and will look to build on those numbers this year. They also added NFL veteran Amike Eggbull, while Travis Freeney led the team in sacks last year with 5.5 and, and will look to have another great year. A surprising cut earlier this week was John Daka, who was a major pass rusher last year for the Houston Roughnecks, finishing with 4.5 sacks and 26 tackles, signaling how deep and strong this unit is heading into 2024. They returned their starting linebacker from last season in Lakeem Williams, who was leading the charge for the unit, Mike Rose and Willie Harvey Jr., while also adding Johnny Buchanan, an undrafted free agent from Delaware, as well as Marcus Cushy from UMass. Along with the edge position, the Battlehawks look to upgrade their secondary heading into the 2024 season by adding a handful of players to the dispersal draft. Chris Payton-Jones and Keelan Kennedy were both great corners on their respective XFL teams last season. They also have a mix of Spring League veterans as well as some returning faces from last season. Like the edge position, this group is an upgraded group unit compared to last season. When it comes to the specialists, Andre Smite beat Andrew Mevis in the kicking competition while they bring back Sterling Hoffrich and long snapper Alex Matheson, who previously spent time with the Los Angeles Rams and played at Minnesota State. This roster may be one of the strongest in the league, and with DC losing leading rusher Abram Smith last week to a torn ACL, they may smell blood in the water and could take over as the best team in the XFL conference. This team is hoping to make it to the playoffs this season after just missing out last year. They open up the season on the road taking on the Michigan Panthers in a game I believe they win. They then host Arlington at the Dome for their home opener, and I think they head down to San Antonio 2-0 where they move to 3-0 with another win. I think they moved to 4-0 with a win at home over Memphis before dropping their first game of the season to D.C. on the road, they hit the halfway point sitting at 4-1. I think back at home they beat Houston before dropping their second game of the season to Birmingham on the road. Week 8 will be a crucial matchup for St. Louis as they host D.C. for the second time this year. Last year, D.C. came into St. Louis and ran all over them but with Abram Smith out for this year. I think with the home field advantage, they finally break their three-game losing streak to D.C., which would be up to four at this point. I think the following week on the road against Arlington, they have a hangover game and lose to a Bob Stoops-led Renegades team before closing out the season at home strong against San Antonio to finish tied with D.C. with the 7-3 and record and the deciding factor for the playoff home field advantage being down to a tiebreaker. With St. Louis being the host of the UFL title game this year, I think there will be a little extra motivation behind their success this season, and they should be one of the best teams this year. What do you think? How will the St. Louis Battlehawks do this season? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.